in my domain Got the whole crowd screaming out our name It's a blowout, it's a hurricane It's over before you know it Why you shaking? We're a dynasty in the making We're the royalty, now we're breaking Down the enemy, move over the soldiers Take a swing, I can take a hit We die, it's fine, we live for this It's all for this We're gonna stand on top with our hands in the sky Gonna raise our cup to the stadium lights For the glory For the glory We celebrate with the city tonight Hear the hometown cheer, it's the Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here as we get set for our third dirt track stop of the season. This is race number 18 of season 6 of the ASRA Hershey's Cup Series, coming at you live for 50 laps of racing at the Springfield Mile. This racetrack, always exciting when we come to it. It's dirt track racing, but we see them force the issue three wide, sometimes four wide, and more often than not, we end up having a bit of a surprise winner. If I recall correctly, most of our race winners here at this track are drivers who have made a pass for the win somewhere within the 10 laps to go mark. So keep an eye on the drivers that are up near the front late in this thing. You could be very well looking at the winner of this season's race. Starting on the pole position is going to be the 83 of Emmanuel Hartnett, 22nd in the point stands. And keep in mind, two of his three career wins in the Hershey's Cup Series have come at dirt tracks. He's won at Eldora, and he won last season, I believe it was, at DuCoin. So Emmanuel Hartnett looking to get his first win of the season here at a dirt track. Alongside of him is going to be Kev Shearer in the 34. Shearer comes into this race 12th in the point stands, former winner this season from Rio de Janeiro. And you look behind them in row two, you've got the 70 of Cat Batson, who currently comes into this race situated 41st in points, one of uh, the drivers right now that if the season were to end would lose her charter for the Hershey's Cup Series next season. And alongside of her is Joshua Sakuli, who is 33rd in the point standings. He's getting close to that danger zone. He's already behind the danger zone of top 30 in the points, which is where you need to be if you have a win to have it count towards a playoff position. And then completing the top five, is another driver that's in the same kind of boat as uh, Cat Batson. That's Blaine Keys. He is dead last in the point standings. And, of course, a lot of rumors swirling around that he could very well be considering retirement at the end of this season. Last week, we saw Brooke Allen go to victory lane for the second time this season. That's her second career win in the Hershey's Cup Series. And just a couple of days later, we found out that Michael Norman Motorsports will not be renewing the contract of Brooke Allen for next season. So this is quite likely the swan song season for Brooke Allen. So how cool is it that she's got two wins so far? Or it's more than likely going to make her first career playoff berth. And who knows? She may end up leaving in her final season in the Hershey's Cup Series as a champion in the Hershey's Cup Series uh, overall. So that, that could be a, a very interesting story that we'll have to follow during the course of this year but there's a lot of drivers in this field want to find victory lane here at springfield we're not going to have them wait any longer we're going down trackside get that command drivers start your engines command is given these drivers will file behind the dodge charger pace car for one pace lap around this mile dirt track and as they do that we're going to give you a top 10 the point stands coming to this race presented by Golden Corral. Rookie Joshua Collard is still the points leader. New second place driver is another rookie in Jordan Anderson. He's 26 points back from the current points leader. Dylan Pote lost another spot last week. He's now third in the points stands. Tim Walsh, who finished runner up to Brooke Allen last week at Arizona, jumps up to fourth in points. And two time winner Alex Drayden currently sits in fifth. The rest of the top 10 the points, Zachary Fitzwater, sixth. Brandon Gonzalez in seventh. Eighth, John Arndt. Ninth, Joseph Srigley. And Brooke Allen completes the top 10. Two drivers in the top 10 have zero victories so far this season. Anderson second in the points. Joseph Sprigley ninth. We'll keep our eyes on them, see if maybe they can uh, put a crooked letter in the win column here today. 
Two drivers we will definitely be keeping an eye on during the course of this race. Dylan Young, who uh, is the defending winner of this race, two-time winner this season, in the 30th position in points. Needs to get away from that danger zone. So we'll watch the two-car today. And also, Leon Alvarez, our winner from Charlotte, 35th in points. He needs to get back into the top 30 in points for that win to count towards a playoff position. But here we go. Getting ready to go. Dirt track race at the Springfield Mile. Green flags in the air. Let's roll. Hartnett, the early advantage with that inside line. He's going to go to the lead. Cap Batson going to look for second place here on Kev Shearer. Easily gets the spot. Now they're three wide for third. Now three wide for fifth. They're going to be three wide all through this field, I guarantee you. Don't poke it up the middle there with Tim Walsh and Blaine Keys. Caution is out already for the first time, and it's on lap number one, even before the completion of lap number one. Don't be surprised if you see more uh, pacing laps than you do racing laps here today. It's a dirt track. Dirt tracks have very low grip. And when you start going three and four wide, it's very easy to slide the tires, slide up the racetrack with the limitation of grip that there is. And so don't be surprised if you see a lot of yellow flags waving in today's event. Let's see who was involved in this one, though. And it appears it might have very well been the Nissan Maxima of Brandon Gonzalez comes into this race seventh in the point stands. I don't see a lot of significant damage on his machine though. JT Bryant in the 22 was also kind of straggling behind the field so he might have also been involved. I see a little bit of left side damage on former champion Kyle Matthews but nothing of real significance. Just a little donut on the door there. No harm, no foul. Typical thing that you see when you come to a dirt track. And as we file through the field I don't really see anybody else with any significant damage at all either. So Whatever it was that brought out the caution looks like it was one of those petty wrecks that's not really going to uh, take anybody out of this race. Let's take a look and see what happened as Emmanuel Hartnett paces us under caution. Looks like this one could very well have been triggered by uh, our defending winner, Dylan Young. Let's see. Four wide situation coming off of turn number two. Dylan Young gets the wall. Well, to be fair, Dylan Young kept it up there. And Brandon Gonzalez just kind of slid up and crowded Dylan Young out of room. So I can't really fault Dylan Young on that one. Contact right there for Kyle Matthews. He then goes down into Daniel Gilbert. That's where he got his donut on the door from. And JT Bryant trying to find his way around. He went low, then tried going high. It's not exactly the best decision to try and change lanes last minute at a dirt track. You're not really going to get it to work, especially with those rear tires sliding out from underneath you. And Bryant slid up and made a little bit of contact there with Brandon Gonzalez. But like I said, it didn't look like it was a wreck that had some really volatile contact. And I think all these drivers could be able to continue. We did have some drivers hit pit road. Cole Baker, Jake Basket, Johnny Gardner amongst them. So some drivers may be planning some fuel strategy here already early on this thing with a very early caution before the completion of lap number one. Apologize for that. I ended up having a sticky keys thing happen there, and hopefully it's not going to ruin the recording. We'll have to wait and see. As Emmanuel Hartnett now going to go back to the top position. If we end up having where the first clip is uh, corrupted, I'm just basically going to start the race from this point. We're on lap number 11. Battle is on between Emmanuel Hart and Leon Alvarez. We have worked one caution back on lap number one where Brandon Gonzalez and James Richardson got together, but no drivers really had any significant damage. You see the 0-2 of Jessica Shelton there. She's just now come back on pit road, or off of pit road, I should say. She restarted in the third position and now finds herself back here off the lead lap after having to make an unscheduled pit stop coming to the green flag for our only restart so far. She's now scored four laps down. Another driver also a lap down is the 21 of Joseph Sprigley. He joins Jake Baskinger also off the lead lap as Shelton now in the way of Kev Shearer. He's gonna hold up that outside line at least for the moment. Second and third. And fourth place now. You got Alvarez, Fitzwater, and there's Jordan Anderson in the 89. So a couple of teammates out of Fitzwater Australia Racing now have cracked the top five. 
Fitzwater, a former winner this season, would love a second trip to Victory Lane. You think about his last two seasons where he has been to Victory Lane, but most of those wins have been during the playoffs, so he hasn't made it into the postseason chase for the championship. And Fitzwater's got a very strong Shell Pennzoil Chevy Camaro, apparently, because he's going to move from third place by Alvarez for second, by Hartnett for the top spot. Jordan Anderson right now the highest running rookie, but look at his rearview mirror and he'll see Elijah Gilbert in the 98. Announcement made last week that this will be the final season for Elijah Gilbert as well. He will not be with Seth Cole Baker Motorsports next season. Instead, going back down to the Pizza Hut X series at Backmarker Motorsports. Seth Colebaker Motorsports has announced they do have plans of who they would more than likely bring up to the team, who they would have signed for their fourth ride should the 98 still have a charter next year. As we're looking at the 51 of James McLeod. McLeod 34th in points coming into this race, looking for a good run. As Joseph Srigley is now leaving pit road. You know, I looked back here at the former winners at this racetrack. Only two former winners are in this field. Defending winner Dylan Young, and then our winner at this track back in season three, and that was Benjamin Miles. As a matter of fact, believe it or not, in the four races that we have run here, two drivers that have gone to victory lane were running at the time for ML Motorsports, then NW Racing. Alvarez looking for the top position again. Leon Alvarez was a two-time winner back in, I want to say, was season three. Trying to pick up his second win of this season now. And no, it wasn't season three. It must have been season four. But Alvarez, as we mentioned, 35th in the points coming into this race. The gap's not that big between where he is in the point standings and Dylan Young who is currently 30th in the point standings. The gap coming into this race is about uh, 22 points. No, I'm sorry, it's less than that. It's, uh, no it is 22 points. So with Alvarez out in front here, he's obviously got a bonus point for leading the lap. He might be able to get a bonus point for leading the most laps if he's able to stay out in front longer now and also if he wins the race that's five more bonus points so he could definitely jump up into the uh, top 30 in the point stands if he can close the deal with win number two here today good battling here this is third fourth and fifth McLeod Gilbert and Hartnett Hartnett's having a tough time not getting acquainted with that wall off turn two I think he's hit it more than anybody here today still managing to stay up in the top five though Cloud trying to clear rookie Elijah Gilbert for what would be the third position. Hasn't been able to do it yet. Last year was obviously a career year for Trent Dunham. Not only did he take the championship, but he also had the most poles of anyone last year, sitting on the inside of the front row a total of five times. And one of those tracks that he sat on the pole at last year was the track we are at here today at Springfield. Run up inside the top 10, maybe not for long. Kev Shearer, Keith Batson, Kyle Keith all over him as they're all fighting to try and get into the top 10. Tim Walsh finished runner-up last week at Arizona. It was looking like he had the car to beat and uh, beat him did Brooke Allen. Tim Walsh had to settle for second, but looking very strong here today. And this is the battle for the lead as they were able to get around Leon Alvarez where McLeod and Anderson, and now they're going to settle it amongst themselves for the top spot. Looks like it will be given to James McLeod out of turn four. Nope, Anderson battles back. And McLeod's just barely going to clear, I think, before they get down to turn number one. Wow, Anderson really had to bail out of the throttle there going to turn one. Can you believe we are not even halfway in this race? And Alvarez now to the inside of Jordan Anderson. That'll be for second place. Then we mentioned that we would not only keep an eye on Leon Alvarez during the course of this race, but also the driver that has two wins this season, the defending winner of this race, and comes in in that critical 30th position in the point stands. That is Dylan Young in the two car. Where is he currently running at? 
Blaine Keys on pit road. And Blaine was running just outside of the top 10. This might be a regularly scheduled stop for him. Where is the two? Oh, there he is. Wow, he's way back here. Last time by scored in the 34th position and right behind him, Benjamin Miles. So our two former race winners are not running well right now. Dylan Poteet is now four laps down, along with Jessica Shelton and Joseph Srigley. Two laps down is Cody Smart. Jake Baskinger, one lap down. Not sure why these drivers are multiple laps down as Cody Smart still sits on pit road. You saw Blaine Keyes was on pit road. Not sure what the reasoning is for it, but tough break for those drivers all losing very, very valuable track position and very valuable spots on track as well. Cloud leads, we've got a dogfight back here for second place. Two teammates battling for that spot, Fitzwater, Anderson, and then you've got Leon Alvarez there in the mix as well. And then look back here. Student versus teacher, I guess you could say, or at least uh, owner versus employee. Rookie RJ Reynolds going to the inside of the driver that owns that car, Kev Shearer. Pretty good showing so far for the CJ Racing Boys. Alvarez in third, Shearer in fifth, Tim Walsh in eighth, and Chris Dodd just cracked the top 10 in the 10th position. So all four of them are currently running up inside of the top 10. Another driver having a good outing. Right there, the 26th of Daniel Voiles, who went to victory lane a couple of weeks ago, picking up his first career win. Also had a decent outing last week at Arizona, so he is now 26th in the point standings, trying to continue to gap himself from 30th position in points. Look how those cars rear end just slides out from underneath them. That's what I love about dirt track racing. Tim Walsh struggling there on the top side. He's now about to fade outside of the top 10. Keith Batson just got around him. And now uh, Kyle Keith trying to do the same. It's like RJ Reynolds also having difficulty holding the bottom of the track. We're back up towards the front though. We've had another lead change. While we've been looking through the field, Leon Alvarez back out in front. Zachary Fitzwater into second. McLeod slipped back to third. Anderson fourth, Elijah Gilbert there in fifth. And now McLeod trying to get to the left rear quarter panel of Zachary Fitzwater for the second position. I'm noticing drivers taking different lines through turns three and four. Some drivers are kind of doing what Lee and Alvarez is doing, drive it in deep, let it ride off the corner. But I saw James McLeod and Zachary Fitzwater both. They kind of enter middle groove, let out of the throttle a little bit more, and then drive it right down to the bottom out of turn number four. It almost gives me the indication that they're pitting, but they're not. They're kind of trying to cut the course. And I think a big reason why they're doing that is it allows them to have a straighter exit off turn four, which in turn gives them better momentum on the straightaway. These drivers adapting themselves to this dirt track, trying to figure out what the best way is to try and get a run. McLeod got a run there through one and two. He's going to get by Fitzwater for second. Now sets his sights again on Leon Alvarez. James McLeod was a two-time winner back in, I believe it was season three. And that's the last time that McLeod has gone to victory lane in the Hershey's Cup Series. Trying to look and see. Maybe it was season four. Yeah, actually, I think it was season four. Yep, two-time winner in season four. His last win was race number 14 of that year at the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte. He went all of season or I guess you could basically say half of season four and all of season five without a trip to victory lane. So he's been on a bit of a winless streak. See if he can close the deal today. We've seen a number of drivers this season be able to close out winless streaks. 
Ian Alvarez being one, Tim Walsh being another, Brooke Allen, of course, getting her first career win after uh, two full-time seasons in Hershey's Cup Series competition. And maybe James McLeod can add his name to the list. McLeod coming into this race, we mentioned, was 34th in the points, stands. The gap between him and 30th in the points was 11, or make that 12 points. So McLeod can definitely, with a win, put himself into the top 30 in points. He's the only driver of the Twinix Racing team that has not yet gone to victory lane. Teammates Alex Drayden and Dylan Poteet have gone to victory lane this year a total of three times. So McLeod kind of the black sheep, the lone man out, would love to be able to make it the trifecta for all three of the Twinix Racing drivers. Boy, if that had been the finish between himself and Alvarez. Two 100s, they're saying on the scoring chart as Alvarez now going to move by for the position. Alvarez trying to become the fourth two-time winner this year, joining Alex Drayden, Dylan Young, and of course, Brooke Allen, who joined the ranks last week at Arizona. Seems like when you get past for the lead, you lose some momentum, because McLeod lost the lead there and now is about to drop back to third. Anderson to the inside for second place. We saw when Alvarez was out in front, he got moved back, it was back to about third. When Fitzwater got moved back, it was to about third. So it seems like you lose a little bit of momentum. And I think a big reason for that is because when you get past, more than likely the driver's gonna pass you to the inside and you're forced to the outside line. So you gotta kinda gotta find your rhythm again, get back into the groove that you were running in previously. And while you're trying to do that, other drivers are able to reel you in. Next time by, it'll be 15 laps to go. We have run the last uh, 30 odd laps under green flag conditions. We've only been under caution once. That was back on lap one. Since then, it's been green flag all the way. Been some good battling up here up front. Leon Alvarez, Jordan Anderson, James McLeod, Zachary Fitzwater. But we've got some new players up here in the top five. How about the 69 of R.J. Reynolds? You know Kev Shear Racing Tech's been doing really well down the Pizza Hut X Series. Three wins for that uh, team overall. Two courtesy of Scott Roush, one courtesy of Jordan Lopez trying to get their Hershey's Cup Series program going. Reynolds comes into this race 31st in the point standing, so there's no doubt that a win would put him into the top 30 in points. And we've already had two rookies go to victory lane this season with Joshua Collard and Benny Watson. So Reynolds trying to become the third as he's gonna take that top position away from Leon Alvarez. Another driver I just noticed has popped up into the top 10. Charles Sanfer there, the GoBowling.com Chevrolet up to sixth and now looking for fifth place on Jordan Anderson. And also how about Keith Batson? Great run right now for that Lincoln Continental. He's up to the third position and now setting his sights on this battle for the lead between Alvarez and RJ Reynolds. Give the spot back to Alvarez. Keith Batson comes into this race, currently situated in the 39th position in points. Last year, got his first career win at Kansas. I think it was last year, or was it back in season four? Uh, nope, was last season. Hasn't been to victory lane since then. And looking for his second career win, first of the season, in what's been a pretty dismal year. Is he going to think about three wide for the lead? Oh, not quite. Reynolds was to the inside of Alvarez, but Batson couldn't quite get to the inside of Reynolds. And now Reynolds is going to go back to the top position by Leon Alvarez. Another driver also noticing that's up there in the top 10. In my opinion, one of the most consistent drivers the last couple of weeks, and that is Kyle Keith. He's now up to 14th in the point stands as the 29 car. And he's right now scored in 10th place. Battle for the lead is on again. This time, Keith Batson's gonna take a turn out in front. And it's the first lap, I believe, that he's gonna lead here today. Caution's out! Caution is waving, and that changes everything. 
nearing the 10 laps to go mark. The caution is out after a long green flag run. It's only the second time that the yellow flag waves here today. And everybody's going to be bunched up here whenever we go back green with only a handful of laps remaining. Wow. I was thinking we might go green flag the rest of the way. But that is not the case. What brought out this yellow? Kind of hard to tell. Some of the drivers back here, drivers that were on pit road, Keys and Smart. Might have been Johnny Garter. It may have been Brandon Gonzalez for the second time today. Who knows? We're going to find out. Let's go back. Look at a replay. Yellow flag waves for the second time here today and is going to set us up for a shootout here at Springfield. Battled somewhere around the 20th position here. James Richardson, Joshua Sakuli, and Shane Lake. And watch here off the corner as Shane Lake is just barely to the inside of the 73. And I don't know if the 55 slid up or the 73 came down, but they locked bumpers regardless. Sakuli sent down into the inside steel guardrail. And since the car did spin 90 degrees around, S3 officials having no choice but to throw the caution flag, especially with... A lot of oncoming traffic. So a single car incident puts us under the caution and is going to set us up for what should be a doozy of a finish. And now this puts almost practically everybody back in the hunt maybe for the win. At least that's up inside the top 15. So we're going to have to wait and see what's in store for us. Let's head back now for the restart. How nervous does Keith Batson have to be right now? We've seen already during that long green flag run, it's very difficult for a driver to hang on to the race lead. Well, now everybody is going to be lined up nose to tail here, and looks like we're going to have at least seven laps to go when we go back green. More than likely six laps to go. It depends on if the lights go out atop the pace car this time. Keith Batson is the leader. RJ Reynolds second. McLeod's third. Alvarez fourth. Samfer is fifth. These guys are desperate for a win and they are all up here with an opportunity. You got Jordan Anderson there in sixth. Elijah Gilbert seventh. Kev Shear eighth. Chris Dodd ninth and tenth is Kyle Keith. Going further down the leaderboard you got Zachary Fitzwater in eleventh. Defending champion Trent Dunham now in twelfth. Manuel Hartnett was out in front earlier. He's in 13th, 14th Daniel Voiles. Brooke Allen, that late charge she had last week in Arizona. Can she do it again here at Springfield? She restarts 15th. The rest of the top 20 currently are Tim Walsh, Sean Galgan, points leader Joshua Collard, James Richardson, and Shane Lake. Drivers that probably won't be winning this race, 37th on down, are currently scored off the lead lap. Jake Bassinger's one lap down, then four laps down of the cars of Joseph Srigley, Dylan Pote, Jessica Shelton, Cody Smart, and Blaine Keyes. That 42 team cannot catch a break, it seems. So when we go green, there will be seven laps to go. And everyone is lined up nose to tail now. If you have a strong enough car, you can pass a lot of drivers in a short amount of time, so we could maybe, with seven laps remaining, we could possibly, it's not out of the realm of imagination that someone back around 18th, 19th, 20th could fight their way up here to the front. Here we go, Keith Batson waiting on the flagman. Waiting to get going here. Green flag back in the air, seven laps to go here at Springfield. Boy, R.J. Reynolds kind of hung back there and got a great run into turn one. He's already the inside. He might be able to clear by the time we exit turn number two. Keith Batson got the wall there off the corner, and Reynolds clears for the top spot. Here comes Charles Sanfer, three wide for second. He puts McLeod in the middle. Batson up topside. And all this going on behind the 69 of R.J. Reynolds, but he better not rest on his laurels because if any of these drivers get clear of each other, they can set their sights on trying to reel him back in. McLeod on the outside line was able to hang on to second, headed into turn one. Sanford trying to get back there to the left rear quarter panel. Not quite there. He might be able to make a move down here into three and four. McLeod's got bigger fish to fry, though. He's trying to get to the back bumper of R.J. Reynolds for the race lead, potentially the race win. 
Tell you one driver I wouldn't count out, and that's Emmanuel Hartnett. Had a strong car started on the pole position for this race. He's now cracked the top 10. Now up to ninth place is Hartnett. Dunham now up to 10th. Ooh, McLeod wanted to get to the inside of RJ Reynolds, but he also had Charles Sanford to the inside of him. I think McLeod's clear of him, though, and now he will try and get back to the inside of the 69. Goodwill loves Ford Fusion. Good battle up here at the front. A rookie and two veterans. At the line as Reynolds hits it, four laps to go. Battle is back on for second place again. Sanford to the inside of McLeod. He'll take the spot, and now Sanford sets his sights on R.J. Reynolds, trying to get Retro Racing Enterprises their first win of the season. Charles Sanford won last year's season finale at Auto Club in front of his home crowd. So far this season, no wins. Although he is the highest running Retro Racing Enterprises car in the point stands, 15th in points, so a win could certainly lock himself up a spot in the playoff standings. He's got three more laps to do it as he's trying to get to the back bumper of rookie R.J. Reynolds. Keep in mind that the first rookie to win this season was Joshua Collard, and where did he win? It was at a dirt track, Bristol Dirt. So the rookies seem to really be able to adapt to dirt track racing pretty doggone well. Sanford trying to close the gap between himself and Reynolds, though. Time is of the essence, and it is running out. Two laps to go this time. Sounded like RJ got a little out of the throttle there going into one. Right now been able to kind of keep it status quo between himself and Charles Sanford. Battle may be on for third. Keith Batson hunting James McLeod. Sanford drives it in a lot deeper there in three and four and he closed the gap up quite a good bit. But can he drive it deep into turn one and close the gap up is the question. White flag displayed this time. One more lap to go. Sanford trying to close the distance between himself and RJ Reynolds. About maybe three car length separation. He's really gonna have to drive it deep here into turns three and four. I didn't know if RJ Reynolds may have hit the wall there or not. I might not have, because it didn't really seem to lose him a lot of momentum. Here we go into three and four. Sanford's got to drive it deep and hope it sticks. Reynolds runs a little bit wide out of turn four, but he's going to be able to hang on. First career win for RJ Reynolds. He takes the checkered flag here today at Springfield Mile. Becomes the third rookie to win this season. And it's his first career win of his Hershey's Cup Series career last season. He went to victory lane in the Pizza Hut X Series, was in the battle for the championship. This season, he may be in the hunt for the Hershey's Cup Series championship as he takes the checkers. He was 31st at points. He will definitely move into the top 30 in the standings. And right now, I think currently would hold one of the 16 playoff slots in the chase for the Hershey's Cup Series Championship. So close for Charles Sanford. But I don't know, it, it kind of almost looked like last week at Arizona when Brooke Allen got around Tim Walsh, then both the cars seemed like they were pretty even. One couldn't pull away from the other and one couldn't close in on the other. That was almost like what it was here where RJ Reynolds was able to keep a, a maintaining of the gap between himself and Charles Sanford and Sanford couldn't close it up Reynolds couldn't really pull away regardless though it's Reynolds with his first career win Sanford will have to settle for second this will still help him climb in the point stands but still a win is needed to get into the playoff system Keith Batson well needed run for that Lincoln Continental as he's going to get third James McLeod will finish in fourth and Leon Alvarez it wasn't a second win but definitely a well needed run for him as he's going to come away with fifth place. Sixth place was Chris Dodd. Elijah Gilbert gets seventh. Brooke Allen, late charge again. She's going to get eighth place. Ninth place for Kyle Keith. And Joshua Collard, the points leader. We didn't really talk about him today. He pops up into the top ten the closing stages for a tenth place finish. Trent Dunham gets eleventh. So a great run there for the defending champ. But he's still searching for his first win of the season. Kev Shear gets twelfth. Shane Lake there in thirteenth. Voyles will finish in 14th with Cole Baker completing the top 15. And the rest of your top 20 
were uh, Tim Walsh, Levi McIntyre, Dallas McIntosh, JT Bryant, and Anthony McCrory. I'll tell you one drive that faded back there in the closing station. That was Emmanuel Hartnett. Not sure where he went. Zachary Fitzwater also faded back to 27th place. Dylan Young finished in 22nd. I don't know if that's going to be enough to keep him in the top 30 in the point standings or not. Going to have to wait and see. And it looks like there was an unscheduled stop for Emmanuel Hartnett, actually. He finished two laps down the 37th position. But some drivers that were up near the front that faded back. Drivers out of Fitzwater Australia Racing. Fitzwater 27th. And Jordan Anderson finished back in 32nd place. Everyone finished this race. 35 of the drivers on the lead lap. Gardner was the last of those. And then multiple laps down were drivers Baskinger, Hartnett, Keys, Poteet, Srigley, Shelton, and Cody Smart. As a matter of fact, I didn't really even think about it, but that late race caution allowed Keys, Poteet, Srigley, Shelton, and Smart to actually battle for position on track there. And Keys, who was 42nd when we went back green, was able to get by all of his competition there that were four laps down with him and finished in 38th. So that was an interesting battle, I guess, that was going on on track as well. Not exactly for the win, but definitely at least for some very valuable points. But that's going to do it here today. R.J. Reynolds, his first career win, becomes the third different rookie to win this season, joining Joshua Collard and Benny Watson, and may have just locked himself up a spot in this season's playoffs in the Hershey's Cup Series chase for the championship. Thank you all for tuning in to today's race. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a video like, subscribe, become part of the crew today. We have shown you your full feature results. These are your rookie point standings and your overall point standings heading into next week. The drivers that would currently hold the 16 playoff spots should the postseason begin now would are highlighted currently in yellow. And next week, we're getting ready to turn left and right. Pizza Deck Series and Hershey's Cup Series action coming from my home track, the Watkins Glen International Speedway. Trucks will be off, and we will see them next time or the following week where they're actually going to go road course racing at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. But until then, I've been Seth Cole. You've been watching production of the SRA, off-lane racing at its best. So long from Springfield.